Welcome to Hearthstone Arena Battles. This is episode two, part one. If you do not want to see the draft, go ahead and click on the annotation or look in the description below and I'll tell you the time to skip to. I choose the warrior this time just because I've had a lot of experience and a lot of success with the warrior and a lot of success with the frothing berserker. And if you've not seen my one turn kill video, it's on my channel. As I review this video, I'm still very torn between the choice of the Stranglethorn Tiger versus the Corsair. Just because at this point in the draft I was not guaranteed a weapon and in that case it would be just an average card. So I went ahead and got the Tiger and of course, of course, right after that I get the Arcanite Reaper draw. So <laughs> kind of bad luck there but it's, it's all you know 2020 hindsight. Here I choose the Jungle Panther just because the Raid Leader is great, but it always gets killed for me and never has really helped me that much, so I went ahead and got the Jungle Panther and the Charge here also as an obvious choice. Here I should have picked the Brewmaster in retrospect just because that 2 draw Rage card is terrible. I mean, uh, it, it can be, actually it can be debated, but... For me, I never have it at the right time, and to take up an entire card slot for something that's an average draw when there have way more draw cards I can find, it's not worth it for me. And the only reason I chose it is because the lesser cost Brewmaster is a much, much better card than the Ancient one. Now right here I'm torn between the Worgen and the Loot Hoarder, but I end up going with the Loot Hoarder just because that guaranteed card draw is so, so nice. And even though I think the Worgen's an excellent card, I just I could not pass up the Loot Hoarder. Here I go with the Fairy Dragon, just because as an early game card, it is one of the better ones. For a 2-3-2 two, two, and that cannot be targeted by Hero Powers is amazing. This choice was definitely one of the harder ones I had in this entire arena experience. All very situational cards, except for Shield Slam, which I did not end up choosing just because I did not know if each armor taken away in this hit would take away that armor. Because that armor is what I use. It always saves my warrior. The Every extra bit of armor I have always comes into play in every single arena match I've had so far. And the Shield Slam would take that away. I've looked it up. I still can't find the answer for it. So if you could let me know in the comments if that does indeed remove every armor as it uses it. If it leaves the armor behind, but still deals that amount of damage, it would be an excellent card. But again, at the time of this recording, and at the time I played the game, I did not know, so I was sitting here kind of wondering. And then, as for the other two cards, the Blood Knight and the Hungry Crab, I think the Blood Knight's a better card overall. But for some reason I did not choose it, just because I was thinking early card draws, that's how I always win as a warrior, is when I have a really strong early card deck. And plus, I, nearly every arena mat, match I have played, the opponent has always had at least one Murloc in their deck. So I go ahead and choose the Hungry Crab here. However, I'll get another chance at a Blood Knight here in a minute, and I choose him. And that Blood Knight comes in handy, I want to say, in 70 or 80% of the hands you'll play. or uh, Just because the opponent will always, always usually picks that 3-1 Divine Shield minion. Or if you're playing a Paladin, there'll be Divine Shields everywhere, and that thing turns into a monster when you eat up a Divine Shield with it. Now, as you see, I get another epic card draw with that horrible Murloc Raid Leader. Terrible, terrible card, unless you're, you know, building a deck around that, but that's only in play mode, not in arena. And Brawl, which I think also is not very good for a 5 cost, you know, maybe killing what you need to kill. So, that's, that's a Desperation card. And I don't think it's very good, so I ended up with the Blood Knight on this pick, which, like I said a minute ago, uh, helped me more than I could ever imagine. <laughs> that thing, that thing was great in my play. The next, uh, I should have gone with the five armor card draw. Not sure why I didn't. I ended up going with the Charge Murloc just because early game deck. And especially since I already had a weapon, I should have really considered getting the the five armor plus the card draw. 
And as you'll see later on, I end up getting a lot more weapons, and so that would have been even more helpful. And of course, the Cult Master here, one of the Arath Arathi Weaponsmith, uh, glad in the end I did not go with that just because of the rest of the cards that I'll get. And here I basically have three healing cards. I have, I'm still aiming for that early deck play, so I get the 3 for 3-3 three, three heal. And then on the next one, I choose the Harvest Golem, just one of the more versatile cards you'll have. Then here's that Divine Shield minion I was telling you about that nearly everyone picks, which is great for that Blood Knight. And then my early game Taunt is really torn against that, but Execute has come in handy in every single arena match I've ever played. So I went with that for more of a late, late game big minion uh, killer. Now I hate this Tarin Taunt and Rage just because it's so weak and creatures are forced to attack it, and it's really only good if you happen to draw it in the very, very beginning of the game. And even then, it's not the best card. And then for that, I go with the uh, three damage to the hero, just because it's real nice. Pick that one for a lot of cards, or a lot of minions. And then the Argent Defender, which is, or Defender of Argus, excuse me, is one of my favorite cards in the game. Excellent, excellent card. Now, I get the Mercenary, just because it's, I mean, it's obvious, it's just been a proven great card. Rampage, one of the more uh, extremely powerful warrior card. Alarm Bot wasn't really necessary here, just because I have no big creatures, so I get the Armorsmith, it's like a taunt, basically. Slam, great card draw. Gurubashi Berserker, can't go wrong with that. And then, I wanted another Slam, but at this point I only had one weapon, it was kind of an in-game weapon. And the Fiery War Axe is, in my opinion, one of the more powerful uh, early game warrior cards just because if you get it right in the beginning, you equip that thing and you pretty much deny the board. Then I get the Charge, just because it's great. And then another one of those dang Rage cards that, in retrospect, I don't know why I even considered those cards. I really do not like them that much. And I think I'll go with... The Berserker here. Yes, I do. And of course, the Silence. I don't have a Silence yet, so that glad that dropped. And then Gorhal, along with, again, the Shield Slam that I'm still torn about. Don't know if that's good or not. And the terrible, terrible, terrible uh, Murloc War Leader. Terrible. Unless, of course, you're building a deck. And Gorhal. Oh, man. That card. It'll save me a couple times, as you will see. And when you kill minions with it, it only reduces the damage by one instead of removing the X completely. So, time for arena battle number one. Get out. We get a hunter for our very, very first game. And an excellent starting hand. Not too bad. Don't need the Arcanine Reaper. More of a late game, along with Execute. So I keep the Frothing Berserker and the Fiery War Axe. And I get the uh, Defender of Argus, which is incredible. And the not so great uh, for this time period, early in the game, that five, five cost card. Hungry Crab, another good early game card, especially if they play a Murloc, which I was hoping they would. And I coin for the Axe, which is my typical opening in just regular play mode and in Arena, if I can get the Axe, because it's so, so strong. Now, due to my inexperience with Hunters, I had absolutely no idea what that trap would be. I thought maybe it could be a Serpent Trap or an Explosive Trap or whatever it was. I really had no idea. I just very, very inexperienced when it comes to Hunters. But he ends up just popping me with his Hero Power. Which is no big deal. And now I'm thinking. I... Uh, don't know what that hero or that secret could be and I'm I want to play my frothing berserker but I just don't know what that secret is if it's gonna activate whenever I you know place the card so I'm thinking maybe I could attack him just to see if it activates off an attack or what exactly the ability is so I'll end up hitting him followed by a hungry crab placement just because I want him out want to have him out on the board and see if the secret activates off the placement which it didn't 
So I armor up, and now I'm planning or thinking about attacking him next turn to see if that activates it. So he ends up playing a Namish Inventor, gets a card, and now it's my turn. I draw a Rampage, extremely nice card. I attack him thinking, oh, you know, it's going to activate something, Explosive Trap, or who knows. And it doesn't activate anything, so now I'm really, uh, don't know what's going on. <laughs> I, I don't know what it could be. So, now I'm just thinking what my next play will be. I end up attacking the Namish Inventor, just to get it down to one so my crab can attack next turn. And lo and behold, it is a snake trap. All of them, all the snakes are beasts. If you're a hunter and you got that snake trap, you can really combo that into something wicked. So immediately I am extremely worried about him placing a timber wolf or something along those lines and buffing all those things up to a 1-1, one -one, or I mean a 2-2, two -two, or something along those lines. So. I armor up, end the turn, to see what he does. And I also do not play the Frothing Berserker because I know he'll just kill it with all those minions on the board. So he clears out the Novish Inventor, hits with all the snakes, and very, very wisely plays that Flesh Eating Ghoul. And then pings me for two. I draw into a Cult Master, very nice, uh, and decide to play the Gurubashi Berserker just because I figure all those guys will hit on him and he'll have to sack the Flesh Eating Ghoul in order to kill it, ending my board nightmare that's going on right now in my very first game. So it takes me a while to farm up the gold for these arenas unless I, you know, I do well. So each arena is a little nerve-wracking for me. You gotta be sure that I win. So this was the worst possible situation I could be in early on uh, in this arena. Here comes an explosive shot. Followed by an arcane shot. So he wipes me out without even uh, without even wasting a minion on me. So that was good. Especially since he knows that he has a huge advantage right now. Especially if he draws into a timber wolf or anything along those lines. But luckily for me, I get a charge card, and I get rid of that flesh and ghoul that was bothering me so much. But now it's his turn to play. And he plays into a Savannah High Main. And at this point, it's starting to look really, really grim. Not only do I have to somehow get a creature on the board to deal with that High Main, but when he dies, he's going to spawn two more beasts. And... Now, especially if he draws into any sort of beast buff or a hyena or anything along those lines, I am finished. So I decide to go with the mercenary just because I figure he'll have to sacrifice his high main and possibly, you know, who knows what else to try to kill that thing. Maybe some removal buffs. This is basically last ditch effort here because my back's against the wall, and I've got nothing to stop these guys. No taunts, no nothing. And his animal companion turns into a beast buff, which is exactly what I was fearing. And now, by now, it's just in his pretty much game over. Well and I even say well played because it's... Uh, it's done. And talking about a terrible, terrible start to my arena battle series. As a matter of fact, when I was recording this, I pretty much figured that, you know, the 0-1 starts are the worst. They are the most demoralizing things ever, especially after you just spent, you know, the morning gathering enough gold for this, and then this happened. So, I was pretty upset to say the least, and things were not looking good. So, with nothing more really left to do, I play a Frothing Berserker. And follow it up with a Defender of Argus, just in a last ditch attempt, you know, to perhaps draw a Miracle card, or, you know, there's basically nothing left for me to do. So I took that loss, went ahead and queued up immediately, and got another Hunter. I thought it was the same guy, luckily it was not, and I've dealt a pretty crappy opening hand. 
debate whether or not to keep Rampage, but I end up deciding that I just need to completely redraw and hopefully, hopefully get a lot of good opening game or opening hand minions. And I do. Perfect. Loot Hoarder of Kerp, of course, is my first play choice, just because he is great. Early game removal for early creatures and fish that card draw is perfect. Also drawn to the Scarlet Crusader, who is another great early game card. Go ahead and plop down the Loot Hoarder. He plays the coin card. And then plays the Demolisher, which is an excellent counter to the Loot Hoarder. Not really a counter necessarily, but something that will survive and be a nuisance for the early game. Luckily for me, I draw into the Murloc Charge, so I can go ahead and sacrifice both of those, get the card draw, and clear the board of that really beefy Demolisher. And the card I end up drawing from the Loot Hoarder is the Hungry Crab, which is great in early game, so perfect time for me to draw that. He plays a 3-3 Taunt, and I draw the Arcanite Reaper. So, I've already got a weapon for a little bit later on in the in the match. I'm pretty happy about that, because i got three weapons, so it's good to go ahead and get some out of the way so I don't draw into, like, you know, three weapons at the same time. That would be really, really bad. So I play my 3-1, hoping that he'll either attack it, or I can attack it next turn and clear it and still have that 3-1 out, th out there for him to deal with. <laughs> Plays a Scavenging Hyena, followed by Direwolf Alpha. Very good play. And one, another thing I'm, uh, I didn't, now that I'm watching this footage again, I wonder if you could play the Blood Knight and eat up your own minion's Divine Shield. That would be pretty cool. Definitely going to look that up after this. But I end up silencing the Scavenging Hyena, killing off that taunt, and playing a 3-2 Fairy Dragon, which he cannot kill with his hero power, which, I mean, he couldn't anyway, but... Good card nonetheless, pretty beefy. That puts three minions out there for him to deal with. He plays an animal companion and ends up getting the best possible run for the scenario right now. Unlucky for me, but good for him. Now again, I'm thinking, oh god, here comes the hunter, you know, wrath. I'm gonna get killed by this guy, whom I'm still thinking is the guy from last time, but it's not. Draw into a frothing berserker, which would be really nice. So I go ahead and play the Frothing Berserker, and now I'm going to go ahead and clear the board, but really beef him up at the same time. Now all he has left is that Worthless Scavenging Hyena is just a 2-2 minion because of the silence. I go ahead and play the Blood Knight as well, just to give extra... Uh, beef on the board, so he has to contend with two creatures now, both relatively strong early game. I know it wasn't ideal because I did not play him into a Divine Shield, but considering he's a hunter and he hasn't played a 3-1 already with a little Divine Shield, I figure I'm I'm pretty safe. It's a safe bet he won't have one. So he clears out the Frothing Berserker. and sends the boar in to attack me. Now I draw a Rampage, so that's that's another great card to have right now. For Lorthamar. Sacrifice the Blood Knight. Yeah, yeah, you gotta be and since I don't really have any minions left to draw, I've got one minion, but he's really cheap. And I'm probably just gonna go ahead and play the Arcanite Reaper next turn. I'll go ahead and play the Mercenary, just because he is a 1-1 one -one on the board. His hero power can't deal with it, so all that's left really is that he somehow plays a whole bunch of beasts, and he does. <laughs> Smart play on his part. 
get some charge. However, his mistake comes where he does not attack the mercenary. Although it makes sense because now he thinks I'm going to have to clear him out, which I do. Fortunately for him, I've got Rampage and I've got an Arcanite Reaper on hand right now. So now he really got himself into deep trouble with that. And he loses 2-5 charge to my Arcanite Reaper. In my opinion, he should have bum-rushed the boar and buffed up the hyena. It would have been a little harder for me to remove. Of the king! Not only that, if he had buffed up his hyena, he probably could have ended up killing off my mercenary this turn, but he, he couldn't. And now I've got 10 damage to deal. So there goes a third of his health in one turn. So I really want to keep this mercenary alive because he's going to be a pain in his ass from here on out. Now I'm starting to see the rest of the game shape up. I'm going to go ahead and clear the board and only take a 2 damage hit here by clearing out that 4-4. Four four. Because I know his hero power can't deal with the mercenary. He's going to have to draw into a charge in order to kill it. Or a taunt. That would also probably do him a lot of good right now. So I know I've got an extra turn to prepare. So I don't want to waste the Defender of Vargas right off the bat. So I decide to play the Scarlet Minion. And so the next turn, I can do the Defender of Argus and get a lot more value out of that card. And buff up my Mercenary to keep him alive. Also draw into a heal. I go ahead and heal. Oops, I'm not sure what happened there. Oh, I'm counting. I'm seeing the cost because there's still increased cost. Go ahead and heal. Attack. It's another third of his health gone. Can't play the Defender of Argus. But he has no cards. And I've healed the minion, so he should be safe. Unfortunately that happens, but luckily I saved the Defender of Argus, so this should give the rest of my minions enough damage to finish this game. My seal for Argus. Of course. He's pretty much dead. He goes ahead and gives the well played. I return the favor. And for some reason I keep... I'm, I'm recording this after I've played, obviously, and I'm losing the end of my footage every time for each game. It's very, very weird. I'm not sure why that's happening, but... Anyways... Won that one, so now we're 1-1, one and, one, and on to the next battle. Now, unfortunately, I queue up into a paladin, and they're probably, along with the priests, the most powerful people in Arena right now, just because of their... All their cards are very, very strong. Priests with mind control, and paladins with all the divine shields, and all the, you know, all the, the damage. It's just... They're very hard to deal with. And my starting hand was not too good, but I keep the Defender of Argus in case I draw into something like this, where I get a Frothing Berserker and that Scarlet Minion. So, this is looking good. Minus the Arcanite Reaver, Reaper, this is a pretty decent hand. Justice and that is not so much. Not so much. I will now I say greetings, you. and he gives me the I Will Crush Justice You, so I give him the I Will Crush Him Back. I, I love Arena. It's so much fun playing with people. Well played. <laughs> well played. <laughs> oh, man. What now? Uh, too good, too good. <laughs> My thanks. So he just does the typical 1-1 one -one opener, which is really good. Getting that stupid Battle Rage card that I should not have drafted to begin with. Now I don't have my typical Fiery War Axe to draw into, so this time I draw into a Frothing Berserker since it only has the 1-1 one, one on the field. And because since, you know, strong, drawing into the Scarlet Minion would, he would just ping that shield and more than willingly sacrifice a 1-1 one, one to get rid of the shield. 
Now he's really examining this minion with his mouse cursor as you can see by the red glow around it. And it makes me wonder if he's a new player? I don't know. I feel like people who play have played a little bit, I mean, not too much, just people who have played, you know, probably, you know, a couple, few hours or so of the game, they don't really have to do that very often, especially the cards you commonly see. I mean, it could just be his first arena. And then he plays the 1-1 one, one again and says that's a mistake, which, yeah, it's not, it's not, I mean, unless he has no other cards. Maybe he accidentally clicked on the button, I don't know, but regardless, nice. it's not too, right. not, it's not a bad situation for me. I go ahead and beef up my Frothing Berserker a little bit. And I followed up with the Scarlet Minion, which, that is a misplay on my part. Because now he's just going to ping that shield with this 1-1, one, one, and which is a great trade. Major misplay on my part. I was just thinking of the Argent, uh, the Defender of Argus, and it kind of clouded my judgment there. I just wanted the two minions so I get the best value out of it, but don't think it's worth sacrificing the Divine Shield on that minion for that reason. Although when I play the Defender of Argus, it will turn into a 3-2, so still not beefy, or a 4-2, still not beefy, but better than just the 3-1. Hmm. So he pings the shield, smart move. Unfortunately, it also activates my Frothing Berserker, and then it gets activated again. So, slight misplay on his part. Reporting for duty. Draw them to Blood Knight, which is going to be excellent in this fight since he is a paladin. I'm going to beef up my Frothing Berserk a little bit. This is mainly just as a stat boost because I wanted him to stay alive now because he's getting really powerful. Seven damage is not something to be messed with. And again, he's he's mousing over the Defender of Argus, and I can't tell whether or not he's a new player and he's never seen that before, or he's just leaving his mouse on the board. I mean, who knows? But I rarely see that. It is a Consecration. Now, typically, that's not the best way to use a Consecration, but in his case, he really needs to get rid of my Frothing Berserker. That thing's just going to keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And as you can tell from the cards he's playing, he has a bunch of one draw, one damage cards. But he does manage to clear my board. And then threatens me with uh, justice. <laughs> of course I threaten him back. Can't let, that, uh, can't let that happen. And fortunately for me, I have that mercenary still. And there's no way he can deal with that right now. Absolutely no way. He's got the 1-1 on the board. He plays into the questing. And really beefs it up and gives it a divine shield. So now he's trying to bait me into being forced to attack his questing. Unfortunately for him, I have the Blood Knight. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier. 3 for 6-6 six, six is nuts. And now I'm also debating whether or not I want that thing to get any stronger, the Questing Adventurer. But at the same time, I know he's probably going to be able to deal with at least one of these two minions next turn. And if he doesn't, he's going to be forced to because a 6-6 six, six and a 7-6 seven, six cannot be left on the board. They will just end up single-handedly destroying you. So... I'm hoping that that forces him to attack me with all his minions and not my hero. Because he also has a lot of damage potential right now. Now, unfortunately, he plays a taunt card. And fortunately for me, he that uh, the 1-1 one, one hero power does not count as a spell or a card drop. So he only gets an extra 1-1 one, one on his questing. But... Now he's trying to bum rush me down, just like I was trying to do with him, because he believes that having that fin crawler, that's going to save him. But unfortunately for him, he does not know that I also have an Arcanite Reaper. And 
And I know that I cannot keep that questing adventure alive any longer. And the rest of his minions are all so low damage that it is definitely worth me killing the questing and taking the 5 damage with the Arcanite Reaper. Now there's a lot of minions on the board, I know you can buff them with, you know, kings or something along those lines, but... I, at this point I'm committed to rushing him down, just because he's so low on health, and the only way he's going to survive is, this, is if he draws, you know, an incredible taunt or something out of nowhere, plus another divine shield or something along those lines, but it won't work out for him, and he's toast, but that'll basically do it for episode... Two, part one of my arena battles so let me know what you think and let me know if you like the post game commentary my first was during game I think it might be a little more exciting live but I am a lot more insightful I guess post game but anyway he rage quits out and I'm two and one not the best start but I'll see you guys for part two thanks for watching let me know what you think